hello welcome to this lesson of our study of you know interior equations okay so in this lesson what we'll do is we'll go through another method of solving Fredon's integral equation okay okay so this one is what we call method of successive approximations to the free term okay so what we're coming to do is we take the Fredon's integral equation then we try to approximate the free terms okay all right i hope you got my point okay so if you have not subscribed to the channel kindly subscribe to support the channel as well okay like my video and also comment as well okay let's start so given a freedom's integral equation like i've written here okay so i have um y of x here this one y of x equals f of x plus lambda times the integral from a to b k of x t y of t dt then the solution okay that is just the solution the solution is giving us y of x equals um what do i have here y of x equals phi naught of x okay this one plus lambda phi one of x plus lambda squared phi two of x so it means that if i'm to move forward i'll get something like plus lambda cubed phi three of x and up to lambda to the power n phi n of x okay so the number of approximations you do depends on you okay where or with our phi naught of x giving us f of x okay so here you can see that f of x here is the free term okay i hope you, are, you remember so we said that this is the unknown function that is the y of x that we are looking for in the Freedom's integral equation or in the integral equation your y of x is always the unknown function f of x is the free term lambda is the investigative parameter and q of xt is your how do you call it your kernel okay so you always say that phi naught of x is given by f of x and then phi n of x so it means that if i have phi naught of x what will be my phi one of x why will my phi two of x so file n of the x's okay so the file one of x file two of x is given by the relation integral from a to b of k of x t times phi n minus one of t dt okay so knowing your file not of x or phi n of phi n minus one of x okay so you can find your phi n minus one of t so in this context you can see that if n is equal to one then we have phi one of x okay here is equal to k of x t then phi n minus one so n is one here so i get phi not of what t but we know phi not of x okay is equal to f of x then it means that phi not of t will be equal to what f of t so you know how to find these these tabs okay so once you know phi naught of x it means phi naught of t will be very simple for you okay so let's pick an example and use this relation to or use this method i've talking i've talked here to you know solve the question so we have y of x equals x squared minus the integral from zero to one x t so this x t here sorry this x t here that you see here is actually your kernel okay and this is your f of x and lambda means what in the um relation or in the general equation is plus lambda so it means that here we have minus here so it means that minus one is equal to lambda and this means lambda is what negative one okay so um i'll write them back here the negative one is our lambda and our a and b's are just the zeros and ones okay so we are supposed to solve this using the method of successive approximations to the free term okay so before that once we have something like this we say that the solution is like this y of x is equal to phi naught of x okay phi naught of x plus lambda phi one of x okay let me write it well phi naught phi one of x plus lambda squared phi 2 of x plus like that okay up to lambda to the power n phi n of x okay where our phi naught of x is equal to our f of x so 
this means that i find out of x is equal to f of x and in this equation f of x is equal to what x squared so we, we know our find out of x now what we need again is that we need k of x t because to find the phi n of x is we will use that and this is equal to x t okay from this this is the candle okay like so in some some question the candle can be a sine function something like each the um sorry sine xt or something so it's not always that you're going to get this okay and um the next thing that we should know as well is um our lambda and this one is equal to negative one in this context okay so we need to write our general formula that phi n of x is always equal to integral from zero to one our k of xt okay so k of xt here is xt then phi n minus one of t dt so our k of xt like like i said is xt here so all that we need is just find a phi n of phi n minus one of t and then we'll find the corresponding phi n okay so this means that our phi one of x okay we said phi one of x if i use the relation for the phi will be equal to zero one k of x t which is s comma t okay oh sorry s times t times phi naught of t dt but we know that phi naught of x is equal to s squared this means that phi naught of t will be equal to wherever i see s i change it to t and that will be t squared okay so it means my phi one of x will be equal to integral from zero to one x t okay into t squared dt and this will give me x here is a constant so i can pull x out zero to one then t times t squared that will give me t cubed then dt okay and this is equal to x out integral of t cubed will give me one over three sorry one over four t to the power four okay then from zero to one when i put the limit in when you put zero in obviously you get zero so the lower limits wouldn't be affected so i have x into 1 over 4 which in effect will give me x over 4 as my phi 1 of x okay it's not q it's phi but um, i'm writing it q it's this okay phi 1 of x so my phi 1 is giving us this now we'll move on to find our phi 2 okay let's actually do it to um let's say phi 4 okay but when i get to phi 3 i write phi 4 using the relation will get so phi 2 of x would definitely be equal to integral from 0 to 1 k of xt and that is xt times phi n minus 1 here n is what 2 so it means you get phi 1 of what t dt and you know that phi 1 of x is equal to right we just got it is equal to x over 4 so it means that phi 1 of t will be equal to t over 4 right I hope you get this so this means that my phi 2 of s will then be equal to integral from 0 to 1 x t into t over 4 okay dt and this will give me x out or x over 4 out integral from 0 to 1 then t squared dt so this will actually give us x over 4 into integral of t squared will give me 1 over 3 t cubed okay from 0 to 1 and this will imply x over 4 into what's 1 over 3 when i put 0 and 1 in okay so i'll have this x over 12 okay i hope you get this so we we'll move on to phi 3 of x and that is equal to integral from 0 to 1 k of xt and that is xt then i'm um, sorry phi 2 of t okay dt but i know that phi 2 of x is equal to x over 12 right so it means um 
modify 2 of t will then be equal to t over 12. So I just put it in and I'll get 5 3 of x is equal to integral from 0 to 1 x t into t over 12 then the t which will definitely give me x over 12 out integral from 0 to 1 and t squared dt obviously this is going to give us x over 36 okay I'm, I'm i'm sure you can do this integration okay and 5 4 of x i won't do it but i will let you go through that and then add it to this okay will obviously also give us x over 108 okay so this is what you have now remember that our y of x the solution is giving us phi naught of x okay plus lambda phi 1 of x plus lambda squared phi 2 of x plus we just sum all of them lambda 3 sorry lambda to the power 3 rather phi 3 of x plus lambda to the power 4 phi 4 of x plus up to have like the number of the files you have okay so actually here i did it to 5 4. now we know that let me write the files okay so that you come and put them here phi naught of x is equal to s squared that is what we have phi 1 of x is equal to x over 4 right and um x over 4 phi 2 of x is giving us x over 12 and phi 3 of x is giving us x over 36 right 36 then you go to phi 4 of x and that is what that is equal to x over 108 okay so these are our five. So it means that our y of x will simply be equal to phi naught of x, which is s squared, then plus lambda here is what? Lambda is negative one, okay? So plus negative one, phi one of x, and that is what? x over four, plus negative one squared, phi two of x, and that is x over four, plus is it x over 12 right okay sorry x over 12 rather over 12 then plus um, negative 1 to the power 3 5 3 of s and that is x over 36 then plus negative 1 to the power 4 x over 108 okay then plus the, the, the like that so we simplify the phi's okay so in effect you will get y of x here being equal to s squared minus x over 4 plus x over 12 minus x over 36 plus x over 108 plus like that so you can see that um apart from the s squared okay Apart from the s squared, all of the other terms are having x multiplying them, okay? So, with with the x minus 4 is the same as x times minus 1 over 4. It really, I'm sorry, minus x over 4 is the same as x times minus 1 over 4. So, it means all of the terms here, apart from the s squared, they have x, 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 x at their numerator. So, I can factor the x out, okay? And then realize that here the first term will be left with minus 1 over 4. Second term will be left with 1 over 12. Third will be minus 1 over 36. And plus 1 over 108. Then plus dot 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 like that. Okay. The terms we didn't find. We didn't find for 5, 5 and the rest. Okay. So it means that I'm supposed to simplify this part. Okay. And then come and put it here but if you really consider minus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 12 minus 1 over 36 
plus 1 over 108 it means i'm summing all these to infinity okay now you check this and realize that this is a geometry series okay so what you do is in order to check that this is a geometric series there should be a common ratio which will be equal to this 1 over 12 divided by negative 1 over 4 okay and when you divide that one to also by um when you divide negative 1 over 3 six by 1 over 12 you are supposed to get the same thing so realize that this 1 over 12 divided by negative 1 over 4 is the same as negative 1 over 36 okay over 1 over 12 and this is the same as 1 over 1 over 108 okay 108 over negative 1 over 36 and all of these gives us negative 1 over 3 which is our common ratio then we'll just go and quote the sum to infinity formula for geometric series to sum these parts okay then we come and put it dead whatever answer we give we come and put it there okay so we know our r and then the sum to infinity says that is equal to a over one minus r okay and then when you come to your series your first term this series that we are talking about is only the number part this part because we just factored x out so x is not part You're only summing the number part okay so the first term here will be negative one over four and we know our r to be negative one over three so a here is equal to negative one over four and our r to be equal to um let me see our r is equal to negative one over three as well okay so it means that our sum to infinity which will be the sum of the number part okay will be equal to negative one over four okay over one minus negative one over three that is our r and this one you simplify this out negative one over four all over one plus one over three and that will give me four over three which will be equal to negative one over four okay times three over four and this is equal to minus three over sixteen so that is the sum to infinity to this part meaning that the whole of this part okay let me use a red pen for you the whole of this part in y of x here this number part sums to negative 3 over 16 so we just come and put it there okay so it means that our y of x here is equal to x squared minus x into now the whole sum gave us what was it plus is plus right it's plus okay here is plus so plus x into minus 3 over 16 which in turn will imply that our y of x here is equal to s squared minus 3x over 16. now this is a solution to the integral equation above or the integral equation that was in question now i realized that we solved this actual question in a method of that that is the exact method of solving freedom's integral equation in my first solution okay so i did series of solutions to freedom's integral equation and that one i saw this using a different method the constant c's okay and we have this as a solution okay so you realize that whatever method you use you get the same answer thank you and don't forget to subscribe to my channel in our next discussion we talk about the method of successive approximations to the kernel okay all right see you next time